this is David Kroll again from Mortgage Network uh, uh, for the second half of Money Matters. Uh, we're looking at uh, some of the uh, economic policies um, and uh, legislative agendas that um, may well affect uh, our national economy and our local economy uh, with the incoming Trump administration. So uh, think of all the ways uh, that the incoming Trump administration has affected uh, our economic lives uh, as of today, Friday the 13th of January. And what's remarkable is that this administration has not yet begun. Uh, it's a week away, but it has already impacted our, our financial lives. Uh, such is the nature of power. Uh, the incoming administration uh, and the change that it represents uh, has caused uh, a great deal of excitement in the equities market. It's led to a, uh, a stock rally, an equities rally, that has basically taken place uh, since the election, November 8th, and has carried through uh, to the beginning of January. There's been a, there's been a modest uh, flattening uh, 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 equities have remained relatively flat for the last uh, 10 days or so. Uh, the bond market, uh, on the other hand, uh, has gotten thoroughly thrashed, thoroughly uh, uh, pummeled uh, since November 8th uh, with uh, bond prices going down, bond yields going up, and therefore interest rates uh, going up. Uh, the 10-year Treasury, just based on the speculation of incoming administration policy, uh, the 10-year Treasury has increased its yield from approximately 1.7 percent to 1.3, uh, 2.36 yesterday, which is a 44 percent increase in the, uh, in the yield on the 10-year. Uh, that's extraordinary. That's the biggest increase since 2009. Uh, so that's, that's since the recession. That's the biggest single single blip up in the yield of the 10-year um, Treasury in, in the entire period. And that's that's just based both of those the equity market increase and the stock and the bond market decrease uh, based on speculation. Uh, uh, we really don't know yet uh, what the true impact is going to be. There's a likelihood, a growing sense of likelihood, that in the first quarter of this year that there'll be somewhat of an adjustment in the, uh, in the stock market euphoria over the incoming uh, Trump administration. So uh, this, is, uh, this is not unheard of. Uh, there's a, a burst of enthusiasm uh, whenever there's a change in administration, it's happened four or five times in a row, and then there's a, a slight letdown uh, after the first quarter. In this case, however, uh, we, may, we may see uh, uh, a, continued, a continued euphoria, but with some radical ups and downs uh, that are indicative of uh, of the Trump administration's management style, or at least of Mr. Mr. Trump's management style, um, uh, a criticism by tweet of, of a specific company uh, can lead to a, a next hour or next day uh, drop of 10, 15, 20 percent in the stock value of that company. So we've never seen really this kind of thing. Uh, uh, in the public, in the public square, before uh, presidents are normally very, very careful uh, not to affect the markets in any direct way, uh, but uh, not so much in this case. We're going to see we're going to see some exciting times here. Uh, the next thing, the next thing that's uh, going to show true impact is uh, if uh, trade agreements. Uh, begin to tighten or are not enthusiastically 
uh, uh, pursued. In other words, if the southeastern uh, countries trade, trade agreement, the big trade agreement that uh, Obama uh, negotiated with, with uh, uh, southeastern nations to the exclusion of China, uh, if, the, if that trade agreement falls apart and is not supported, uh, what you will find is that the, uh, the cost of imports to the United States will increase and, uh, and the United States uh, imports out to the rest of the world, uh, exports out to the rest of the world, uh, will decrease because uh, the dollar is so strong that, uh, and will simply become stronger, um, uh, it will lead to a decrease in, in our exports and uh, difficulty importing uh, uh, goods from other countries, cost of which will increase. So trade, uh, uh, the tightening of the uh, trade agreements uh, is, is, an, is a move that has a, a double-edged sword. It's a, um, uh, it's a move that, that if it's finely tuned, can lead to more jobs in the United States uh, and a slowing down of the flow of jobs out of the United States in the manufacturing sector. It's a very interesting move. Uh, on the other hand, if, if it's overplayed even only slightly, it's a re it, it can uh, slow down growth uh, very quickly, slow down economic growth very quickly, and is recessionary in nature. It's one of the things that could trigger recession. We are at the end right now of a eight-year growth cycle in the American economy. Now, think about this. Uh, in 2009, it was <coughs> the economy was on its knees, absolutely on its knees. Uh, <coughs> we've had consistent job growth almost every single month for nine years. <coughs> the nine years of growth, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's not nine years, 2009, 2017, eight years of growth, uh, seven and a half years of growth, eight years of growth. Uh, we've had consistent growth in employment. We've had slow but consistent growth in gross national product. This is a growing, stronger, by far, economy. The Dow over this period has tripled, tripled over this period. All of the conditions right now are correct for, in, in grand terms, for a down cycle, a, a, a recessionary cycle, for a slowdown in the economy. Uh, it's a it's a particularly dangerous time. The economy has never grown for 10 years, 12 years, 14 years in a row. Seven-year cycles, eight-year cycles are the norm. We're coming up to the end of a cycle, and anything that's identifiable as a headwind against growth has to be approached very carefully. Trade agreements, or the uh, restrictive, uh, restrictive trade agreements. Uh, uh, I'm being a little confusing when I talk about trade agreements. Trade agreements m normally mean an expansion of trade. Uh, so uh, a, a tightening of uh, and, and a more restrictive uh, policy toward trade could very easily tip the country into recession. So these these are. These are sort of the, the, uh, balancing, uh, the balancing worries amongst economists at the moment. There's excitement about uh, new business-friendly policy, but there's also a strong sense on a, um, on a more elevated level, there's a strong sense that we're coming to the end of an economic cycle and that um, a tightening of the screws on trade could easily send us into recession. The, uh, the other most complex issue that we face is that 
the economy is in a global shift uh, from uh, uh, core manufacturing uh, to uh, more highly skilled, uh, more highly skilled jobs, and uh, the retraining programs are simply not in place yet to create those retrained jobs. So. Uh, that's it for the moment. Uh, this is a very exciting time. Uh, this is David Kroll from Money Matters, and uh, we'll be back next week to see what the developments are uh, uh, as the Trump administration uh, takes the reins.